Welcome to Between the Lines, a podcast. I'm Janine. And I'm Jess. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. And in this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. Uh, We'll talk about the first half of the book and predict where it might be going. And then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark. There will be spoilers. Depending on the book, uh, there may be references to violent sex or other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. And all right, we'll get into this week's book. (laughs) All right, today we are attempting Stephen King again because it's spooky season. So we thought we'd try his latest novel, Holly. Stephen King's Holly marks the triumphant return of beloved King character Holly Gibney. Readers have witnessed Holly's gradual transformation from a shy, but also brave and ethical, recluse in Mr. Mercedes to Bill Hodge's partner in Finders Keepers to a full-fledged, smart, and occasionally tough private detective in The Outsider. In King's new novel, Holly is on her own and up against a pair of unimaginably depraved and brilliantly disguised adversaries. When Penny Dahl calls the Finders Keepers Detective Agency hoping for help locating her missing daughter, Holly is reluctant to accept the case. Her partner, Pete, has COVID, her very complicated mother has just died, and Holly is meant to be on leave. But something in Penny Dahl's desperate voice makes it impossible for Holly to turn her down. Mere blocks from where Bonnie Dahl disappeared live professors Rodney and Emily Harris. They are the picture of bourgeois respectability, married octogenarians devoted to each other and semi-retired lifelong academics, but they are harboring an unholy secret in the basement of their well-kept book-lined home, one that may be related to Bonnie's disappearance, and it will prove nearly impossible to discover what they are up to. They are savvy, they are patient, and they are ruthless. Holly must summon all her formidable talents to outthink and outmaneuver the shockingly twisted professors in this chilling new masterwork from Stephen King. Of this character, Stephen King says, I could never let Holly Gibney go. She was supposed to be a walk-on character in Mr. Mercedes, and she just kind of stole the book and stole my heart. Holly is all her. According to Goodreads, this is the third book in the Holly Gibney series, described as a character originating in the Bill Hodges trilogy, then continuing in her own stories. So other books in the series include The Outsiders and If It Bleeds, which is a collection of novellas. Fun fact about the book, the cover apparently glows in the dark. So I I have tried it. Uh, It wasn't uh, quote unquote charged at the time, so it didn't work super well, but I have seen pictures online of it, so... Uh, If you do own the book, check it out, see, see what you can see. And this isn't a a repeat author for us, but Stephen King has been around a long time. There's a lot of information about him. So here's some more for you all. King has put some of his college dramatic society experience to use, doing cameos in several of the film adaptations of his works, as well as a bit part in a George Romero picture, Night Riders. So there you go. Stephen King has published works under several pseudonyms, including Richard Bachman, which he used during the 70s and 80s. One explanation was that he wanted to test whether he could replicate his success again and to allay his fears that his popularity was an accident. An alternate explanation was that publishing standards at the time allowed only a single book a year. King picked up the surname from the Canadian hard rock band Bachman Turner Overdrive, of which he is a fan. Bachman's first name is a nod to Richard Stark, the pseudonym of Donald E. Westlake. No idea who that is, but there you go. The Bachman books are darker than King's usual fare. Hard to believe. King called Bachman dark-toned, despairing, not a very nice guy. A literary guild member praised thinner as what Stephen King would write like if Stephen King could really write. Richard Bachman was exposed as King's pseudonym by a persistent Washington DC bookstore clerk, Steve Brown, who noticed similarities between the works and later located publishers records at the Library of Congress that named King as the author of one of Bachman's novels. This led to a press release heralding Bachman's death from cancer of the pseudonym, a rare form of schizonomia. I thought that was kind of interesting. That's one way to kill off the... uh... (laughs) pseudonym yep may as well do a flare yes exactly <laughs> but that people didn't know <laughs> until this guy outed him that he yeah. was writing as this author which is kind of interesting and also that part of the name came from a canadian band yeah so so cover um i like the house <laughs> i want the house i'd plant a shrub in front of the basement window that has a woman in a cage so you know yeah well my neighbors don't but probably you can't actually see that what <laughs> no 
Yes. I expect it to be represented as it was on the cover at all times. Yeah. No. The cover is boring and bland until I found out that it glows in the dark. (laughs) I did not know that. And that has completely redeemed it for me. If you have a boring cover, make it glow in the dark because everyone will like you better for it. How cool is that? Yeah. Right? So we, uh, I think we'll take it into our book drop later and try it out. Yes, definitely. I want to know if it actually glows. Yeah. For science. For science. It's research (laughs) purposes, right? Exactly. And then maybe we'll just hide in there for the rest of the day. (laughs) Just kidding. Don't come out. (laughs) Just say thank you to everybody that thinks to hack. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Drop is talking. Oh, no. Sometimes when I'm in there and people are throwing in books and they're just, like, really coming in, I want to be like, ouch! (laughs) Anyway, so uh, you alluded to the fact that you have some thoughts about this book and possibly not positive ones. So I'm curious... I've come to the conclusion that I just don't like Stephen King. No. Not subject matter or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Horror is fine. As long as you're not running after someone with a chainsaw, I don't care. My main issue with that is a chainsaw is a terrible weapon. Chainsaw (laughs) gets jammed cutting wood, for crying out loud. Uh. So, rethink your weapon. Maybe a skill saw, a miter saw, table saw if you've got the room. Um, (laughs) Don't take these tips as actual life advice. Please don't kill her. Wood chipper. Spoiler Again, very alert. messy and not as efficient as you'd think. Yeah, I know, I know. But anywho, tips for criminals being over now. I do not like his writing style. No. I cannot stand it. Lay off the parentheses. <laughs> One page had five of them. Really? Stop. Just stop. Like, it's so annoying. Also, he uses the word poop a lot. Did you notice that? Oh, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> my comment will not be able to be repeated verbatim but i did make a note saying holly needs to stop using the word poopy she's not <clears throat> five yes like and also it's it's seriously grow up o-o-u-g-h is that supposed to be oof i don't know i was going to comment on that as well because i'm like i don't know what sound you're trying to make there my guess would be oof but oof has f's f's, f's. <laughs> it has f's if it has f's it has well, a g but a g h could also make an f sound so is he trying to be clever yes but i would recommend that if you're looking how to spell noises please refer to calvin and hobbs they do an excellent job of it <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening mr king <laughs> if you're listening mr king you probably should get to work on your next book you've got things to do man also or perhaps he you... needs an editor that doesn't like him hmm I could have cut this book in half. Like, and this book isn't even long compared to his usual. No, but there's so much unnecessary stuff in there. Yeah. Like, I, I, I literally made a note of, was Stephen King trying to stop smoking when he wrote this book? Yes. Because she's either smoking, talking about, th- or thinking about smoking, or complaining about where they can't smoke anymore, or mm-hmm. commentating on it because it's not necessarily negative. Yeah. But, like... I know. There's a point where I'm like, seriously, Stephen, are you yeah. trying to kick a habit here or something? There's a lot of stuff like that where it's like, like let's comment on this over and over. There's something else, And it's too. not necessary. Like, for example, okay, uh, one of the kids that got murdered, he... I shouldn't say kids. He was a teenager or young adult or whatever. Um, he was sitting up on the drive-in point or mm-hmm. whatever it was called, and he was smoking. And he realized after that they could see the butt of the the cigarette or whatever else it may have been. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how they could kind of tell and they they got used to him being there. That is something that, okay, no, this is actually contributing to the plot. Right. Your constant whinging about, I want a cigarette, I want a cigarette. Oh, I can really use a cigarette right about now. Mm -hmm. Seriously, stop it. Yeah. (sighs) Nope, agreed. That was getting to be a little it's, much. It was a bit much. And, and there's also, a point where I'm going, get a nicotine patch if you can't smoke inside. I know. Like, also, gum. there's a lot of COVID talk, oh. which I could do without. You wrote that down also. I wrote that down as well. The last thing after living through the pandemic that I need to read about is the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And when they're, like, greeting each other, like, oh, Pfizer, you, Moderna, oh. Yeah, like, that's like, something. Oh, just go away. Have you ever had that conversation with anybody? Like, no. when you said, are you vaccinated? Oh, yeah, Moderna. Oh, Pfizer for me. Like, I, and, and. Johnson and Johnson. Oh, yes. Like, elbow, elbow bump. Have you ever. I have elbow? never elbow bumped anyone, but that's mainly because I didn't have to. Yeah. Uh, like, I have not either. 
maybe one time. It, if it's been a situation where we have to shake hands, we're like, eh, no, we're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, like Let's I would not bump elbows. Rather do nothing than bump an elbow. But like the amount of COVID talk I in know. this was just. It's too much. Unnecessary. It's too much. Like I have lived through it. We lived through it. We That's, know. Yeah. A few slight mentions about it, like just heads up, happening in COVID times. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah. We kind of understand some of like, you know, mask on, mask off, mask on, mask off, restrictions, whatever. But yeah. But this is constant harping on it. Too much. Where it's like just, and a, a lot of it was situations where I'm like, you'd never need to ask that. It's none of your business. This is not something that ever needs to be in the book. Mm -hmm. Like, I can understand when Brenda. Who's the one that goes to the little old lady's house? Oh, yeah, she, I think that's Brenda. Is it a Brenda? Yeah. Okay. I knew it started with a B. Where she goes to the little old lady's house. I love the little old lady, by the way. She's hilarious. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, having the mask on, mask off, Moderna, Pfizer talk there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand that. That is actually necessary because you don't want to accidentally kill an old woman. You have other ways of doing that in these kind of books. But there is just so much unnecessary. Mm hmm where it just kind of feels like padding the book at a point where mm -hmm. like he tried to hit a word count and just threw it yeah. going 10 more times. Yeah, so the smoking and the COVID, also the half jokes. Like, a millionaire walks into a oh, bar no. and blah, 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 nothing. Honestly, I was so ragey about this book. <laughs> okay. It's just bad. I will say, though, like, writing style, yes. I, But in terms no. of general plot and story, there are a few things that I do not care for. But the actual, like... The mystery of it, the I'm very intrigued it? by. I yes. want to know what's going to happen. Um, I don't hate it. The mystery of it, yes, fine. fine. The general plot of it, in the whole like old professors killing people, someone trying to figure out there's only mm -hmm. the connection of the location, that kind of thing. That I find interesting, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's so lost in her whining about her mother, complaining mm -hmm. about COVID, smoking throughout all of that. And the word poop 500 the times. The word poopy 500 times. It's not even poop. It's poopy. Like, it's you're not both. Like five. It's both. Like, yeah. I just. There's also a lot of reference to um, the other books. Oh, yes. Bill Hader when he tried to kill me. I yeah. Know. So and so. I, I don't think it was Bill Hader. No. I think that's somebody Bill else. Hodges, that Bill Hodges. That was her. Right? That was. He didn't try to kill her. That was her boss or her okay. mentor. Or... Isn't Bill Hader like a comedian or yeah, something? Yeah, it's okay. Bill Hader tried to kill no one. <laughs> he's I'd the like guy. to clarify that for the lawyers. Have you seen? He's that guy that's doing the dance with that song. Do we do maca maca? And you know, I'm and he's not like, familiar with that. okay, isn't he on SNL? I think he was. I don't yeah. think he is anymore. But anywho, uh, Bill Hader has killed no one that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just so. Yeah. I find her to be a very annoying character. Yeah. Like, if you kill this character, one page from now. I would probably cheer, actually. But then you have no book left because the book is literally named Holly. You're familiar with Psycho, right? Where they kill off the main character, like, 30 minutes in or 20 minutes in. I know nothing And then completely about... flip characters. I know nothing about Psycho. Mm. You should. It's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. It's hilarious in the same way that the first Jaws is hilarious, where it's like, ha-ha, cardboard shark. <laughs> okay. I've never seen Jaws either, so. What? No. <gasps> no. Yes. How have you not seen Jaws? It's so delightfully bad. Anyway, never they, mind. In the first chapter, when they capture Jorge, George. Honestly, that is the name that always messes me up. I'm like, I know it's pronounced Jorge. Yeah. But it looks, it, it is spelled exactly the way that George should be if the English <laughs> language made any sense at all. <laughs> yes. Uh I, it's the same. Jorge is just Spanish for George. Yes, I know. But why is the English one not spelled like the Spanish one? Because the Spanish one makes, might, makes way more sense in the English language. And also, if you're actually going to spell Jorge the way it sounds, you would not spell it J-O-R-G-E. No, there would be W's in there. You would put a W in Jorge? If we're using the original... I would say H-O-R-H-A-Y, Jorge. Depends if you want the W from the profession or not. <laughs> That's the politest way I can think ways. of to say it. Yes. Um, the scene with the liver is quite possibly one of the grossest things that I have ever in my life read. I did almost throw up. You were looking at me like I am nutty, but I did almost throw up. <laughs> and there was a few other times when they talked. Every time liver came up in the book, I was a little bit gaggy. And then there was something else with the brains that I... Those things I do not care for. See, I found the tea was worse for me. 
Really? Because there was definitely something in that tea. Oh, there was something in that tea for sure. And, like, don't get me wrong, I wasn't a fan of the liver thing. I'm more, the liver thing was more like, why is it specifically liver? Like, what about liver? Because it's full of iron. So important for them to eat. Why couldn't it have been a different cut of meat or something like that? Like, by the sounds of it, like, uh, Richard? Rodney. 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 I'll get names eventually. Um, was like a nutritionist biology dude. He liked nutrition. Mm-hmm. At, at one point, I think it was Olivia that was saying that Olivia, the old lady, um, mm-hmm. was saying that he he was known for being a wee bit of a fanatic about nutrition. Um, so I'm curious as to what their reasoning behind the liver is because that's the only thing they ever feed them is liver. I think so. First of all, the liver because it was raw, mm-hmm. and then he had to also drink the. Jeez, I can hardly talk about it, to be honest, um, is why it was gross to me. But I think, so what it sounds like to me, they haven't really outright said this apart from the, the part where they were talking about having a drink and it had this guy's brains in it. Mm-hmm. I think it, that... It was a sorbet. Oh, okay. Something with somebody's brains. I think they are eating these people. Yes. Or using their blood or something. From what and I can so, tell, they are essentially harvesting them. Yeah. Because there was, like, the, the ointment for her sciatica. Yes. That was harvested from the stomach lining. Yeah, that part also was quite gross. Yes. Um, so I I think the liver must do something to, like, either the blood or the body or something. Because liver is very high in iron. And so... It must have some um, properties. See, it strikes me as like a purification shtick. Mm. Because they keep them in there for an X amount of time. They only feed them liver mm-hmm. and water. So to me, it strikes me as some kind of like purification ritual thing that they do rather than... Yeah, maybe. Necessarily. Like, it's the fact the liver's raw. Yeah. Like, liver's still good for you if it's cooked. Cooking is fine. Encouraged even. Oh, it's so nasty. Add some onions. No. I don't like liver. Everyone to eat liver. No. But you can still get a lot of nutritional value out of it. When I was in the hospital having my first baby, I was in labor, and they brought me supper, and that supper was liver. It was gross. I did not eat it. And why are you giving somebody who needs to have strength to deliver a baby something they're not going to (laughs) eat? Yeah, kind of. I'm not eating that. That's nasty. It looked gross. There was no it's way. one of those things where I'm like, would I eat it if I was starving? Yes. Perhaps. Is it something I will go out and purchase? Never, no. ever, ever. I think there are some things that are better made into sausage. Even if I was starving, I after reading this, I don't think... I think this book will probably put you off liver for a while. Ever, forever. Yeah. If yeah. you were ever on liver to begin with and it wasn't just a forced meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, but that, that whole shtick with the harvesting and whatever's going on there. Those people are creepy. They are... I'm, I am I hate Emily. They are... Emily is straight up evil. Like, Rodney is creepy. Yeah. He, he's got the handsy professor vibe to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know. Stop commenting on 18-year-olds, dude. You're creepy as hell. Um, but Emily is, like, straight up... Like, if there is a human being in the world that's been discriminated against, she is on that discrimination bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, let's come on, let's go. Yeah. Like, oh, she, she is. is racist, she is homophobic, she is, like, horrible. Mm-hmm. And, like, there were times where I'm like, I don't even want to read about this lady because she's just straight up mean. She is bad. She's horrible. So you have to, like... He's, he's doing a good job of making me hate them. Yeah. I'll say that much. Aside from all the, like, repetitive, weird annoying things he is not a bad writer like after the first 15 pages i was like oh i'm kind of want to keep going i had to stop because i don't know why but i wasn't quite that far i i I want to know what happens i hope they get their comeuppance and you know yeah say a wood chippers hypothetically Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but i don't know i feel like stephen king has hit the point where he needs an editor that doesn't like him Mm. Like, to actually go, Stephen, mm-hmm. cut this. Like, I think with quite a few of the big-name authors, there is a point where they really need... They need to not be allowed to write a book verbatim. They need to be edited. They need to be held to a standard. Because stop talking about smoking and COVID. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it is an unnecessary amount. Mm-hmm. And it's not done well. It's awkward. It's no. funky. 
I know some of the writing feels clunky. I'm curious though to read some of his earlier work and see like I read um so Sleeping Beauties we did last year. Mm-hmm. You all know we hated that one. I fell asleep multiple times. <laughs> also boring as heck. Yeah. But that I don't he wrote that one with his son. Yes. And I don't think that that's his typical writing either. Like that one was more fantasy than horror. It, it wasn't even fantasy though. Like it was It was just more- dull alternate reality and so i i wouldn't characterize that as a good picture of stephen king's no. writing no. and i did read 11 22 63 which is also wildly different from what he usually writes because it's not horror at all is that the one about it's uh, about jfk's yeah. assassination and time travel and it was fascinating to me like that book is I think close to 900 pages and I could not put it down. I loved that book Mm -hmm. and that book has stuck with me since I read it like six, seven years ago. Oh, wow. So yeah. Um, I really, really like that book. So I'm curious what his older stuff is like. So that's the thing. I don't doubt that he was a good writer at some point or that he has good books Mm -hmm. because you don't get to this point without being decent. Yeah. And he's also not a bad writer because you really hate Rodney and Emily. Yeah. You know, I don't, like, there are good parts in this book. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot. You just lot. have to wade through a lot of annoying stuff to get there. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing where I'm going, I don't think there's enough meat in this book to justify the however many pages it is. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels like there's a lot of filler. Like, I do not care for the whining about her mother every five seconds. Yeah. And it's in the weirdest spots, too. Yeah. Like, it's, I think, and Linda put a caption or put it in the screen or whatever if I'm wrong. I, if I'm not mistaken, Stephen King was the one that said, once you write something, take out ten words or something like that. Oh, really? I think it was him. Okay. It may be somebody else. But either way, when you write something, go and then review it and take a bunch of stuff out. Stephen! hmm <laughs> If it wasn't you that said it, you need to follow that guy's advice. If it was you that said yeah. it, follow your own advice. I know. Well, like, he does... just so much, like... I want to go through with a black pen and just go redact, redact. redact. Yeah. He does <laughs> have a book on writing, it's called, mm-hmm. about writing. So it's possible that he did say that. Uh, I also really feel like I need to have read the other books, like the Mr. Mercedes, Mercedes series, to understand, because they sort refer of. back to that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, An annoying amount. She talks about Bill Hodges a lot, and even Brenda, there was a character who fell down an elevator shaft that they keep referring to. Mm-hmm. And so I sort of feel like, okay, I thought this one was kind of like you could read it on its own but i f- well, it's fine but it's still i feel like no i mean like it's fine to read this without having read that but i still wish that i had read that yeah for that background information see that's the thing this is one of those books that feels kind of like you have to do your homework you don't have a choice mm-hmm. but all of the references for the most part to the other books are so clunky yeah like it's like oh it, there was a truck, like the one that, what's his name? Bill Hodges. Bill Hodges drove when he tried to blow me up. Like, it's painfully, like, do you remember that book? Huh? huh? Do you remember that book? Do you remember that book? Hey, I, I wrote a book. Do you remember that yeah. book? <laughs> Did you read that book? Go read this other book, please. Yeah. Please like, go buy my other book. There's so much reference to it that yeah. it's like, I don't feel like I need to read the other books, but not in a good way, more like in a, please don't beat me over the head with this. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I don't like Holly as a character, which doesn't help. <laughs> but but it's whiny. In- interesting that she was only supposed to be like a bit character in the first book. <laughs> but she stole his heart. Oh, put it back. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I think this could have been cut down by half this entire book. Just chop it right in half. Remove all of the COVID references. Nobody in the world needs these because we were all there. Nobody needs COVID explained to them. Amen. We got it. We're fine. Yeah. Cut the COVID stuff out. Cut the annoying millionaire watch into a bar because it is annoying and mm-hmm. not funny. And no. it really makes me dislike this character. And get a punchline. Get a punchline. Oh my God, get a punchline. <laughs> He's not known for his humor. I'll give him that. <laughs> but like, Holly is, I'm not saying she doesn't have some investigative chops as it were. Mm-hmm. But she needed to call Jerome to help her... Interview teenage boys. Interview teenage boys. Yeah. They are not that scary. They can be tamed with food for crying out loud. Yeah. They're essentially 
lost kitty cats out by a dumpster that are like, <laughs> and then you would give them a saucer of warm milk and they're like, oh, I love you forever. Perhaps. I mean, don't have teenage boys love you forever, but like. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps she thought they would open up more to a man and that's why she Only called Only if them. he had more food. <laughs> I don't not know. They're complex creatures. No, I know. But, uh. And, like, they like, weren't in, like, gang territory or anything where I'm like, yeah, no, backup's justified. Yeah. She's a very, like, one-note character also. Like, just yeah. very flat and, like, she doesn't I'm have a lot of... I'm not about my mom or smoking or being scared of teenage boys. What am I going to do? She doesn't have a lot of personality so far. I will say this is a hundred times better than Sleeping Beauty. Yes. But... But only because this is a bit more horror. Like, there's horror elements in it if you can get through the crushing boredom. Yeah. And the parts that are well-written are really well-written. Yeah, yeah. Like, just get rid of the filler, Steven. Yeah. I also had to laugh because the one character's nickname is Stinky. Yeah. And when I was in high school, there was also a boy whose nickname was Stinky. I feel like there's a lot of teenage boys that could use that moniker. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's... I mean, I felt bad for Stinky's mom. Yeah. I I was really hoping that kid would be okay. Mm Mm-hmm. I am glad Brenda got the heck out of that creepy house. Oh, I know. And that she found Olivia. It's the tea thing. It was the tea thing, oh, honestly. I know. I'm like, oh, I don't, I, I already, like, tea already makes me kind of like, oh, <laughs> I can't stand it. I do not like the smell. If somebody in the break room is having tea five minutes into my hour break, I will leave the break room. I hate tea. Wow. Okay, then. On top of the fact that I don't like tea, you now have mystery tea <laughs> from at least somewhat cannibalistic old couple. Oh, mystery like, tea. Yep, no, I know. I'm, I'm fine. There was a lot of really gaggy things in the first half of this book. Mm-hmm. And he can do that really well. Uh, there's a... See, that's the thing with this book. I'm kind of torn between I want to know more because I want to figure out how everything happens because right now they he's still been very very vague about like mm-hmm. they get them into the van with they're like can you push my old woman slash old husband up the hill in a wheelchair they get them that way mm-hmm. and then they're de-using them later mm-hmm. uh, there's been very little apart from the liver yeah well, liver they... of liver and ocean of fish thing that like they haven't gone into any detail like the closest they got to the in between part was when they got really frustrated at the vegan who wouldn't eat the liver and shot them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which, I enjoyed I that. Mean, <laughs> credit to the vegan. Mm-hmm. Like, she knew she wasn't getting out of there and went, I'm dying. I'm dying with a salad. Thank you. Yeah, bye. I'm not eating that meat. Like, full credit to her for standing up. I know. But I'm kind of torn between the, I want to know more. I want to know why. I want to know... Like, mm-hmm. even just, like, they're little old people. She I keeps know. complaining about her sciatica, her sciatica. No, but she has the magic stomach cream that fixes it. No, you don't, honey. You have a placebo. Go away. I think my understanding is that they're trying to uh, lengthen their lives. That's my understanding. They're, like, experimenting with... Like, there is a conspiracy theory out there that is along these same lines, and that was the first thing I thought of when I got to these parts. Interesting. Because, like, hmm. Yeah. Well, if that's what it takes to stay youthful, I... No, I'll die. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. I will, I will take death 15 times over. Mm-hmm. That's... No. I don't... Like, I, I, I don't need the nitty-gritty details of it, mm-hmm. but they're old. Mm-hmm. These are full-grown people. Literally, how do they lift them? Yeah. Like... I know. I was wondering that, too. Like, how do they get them downstairs? Like, they're... Uh, I, I have a question in terms of the actual, like, physical, like... Is there an the, the human is not light. No. Especially one who is drugged and knocked out. It's, like, dead weight. Yeah. Like... And then after they're dead, it is dead weight. Like, and there was no indication of, like, a pulley system or anything in the basement. Like... No. I, I have questions in terms of, like, the actual logistics of how these little old people are managing that. Mm-hmm. So do they have help? I don't think so. I got Doesn't no talk about that anywhere. That gotten help from anyone yeah they seem to think everybody aside from them is beneath them somehow mm-hmm. like they've got attitude up the wazoo yep so i know i, I mean i don't want the nitty-gritty details but there's also kind of this gaping hole of this person says she's having difficulty walking up the stairs mm-hmm. how is she supposed to how are they now, moving these people around move a full-grown man yeah even with the two of them 
Yeah. Like, her sciatica's going to give out. And his arthritis. Exactly. <laughs> and even if it's power tools, I was using a power tool for a solid three hours on Saturday. My arms still feel it. Yeah. And I don't have arthritis yet. Or sciatica. Or sciatica. Like. It, yeah. No, I know. I wondered that also. I've got maybe questions in that regard that maybe, I don't think I want answered. <laughs> maybe we don't have all the information yet. Well, I'm assuming we're only halfway through the book. If we had all the information at this point. Well, frankly, I'm disappointed in Stephen as a writer, <laughs> which I think has actually already been covered as well. I think so. But. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't I don't love all the gross stuff and all the repetitive stuff. But if you can flesh out the actual story and what is actually going on there, mm. that part is very fascinating and interesting. And and what is how does Barbara and Olivia fit into that? Like. It seems like a totally That's extra thing. story that has nothing to do with anything. Like, I can understand the Barbara showing up to the professor's house because I'm like, oh, here we go. She's going to be another victim or yeah. she's going to see something. There's going to be something. That there. is actually what I wrote down is that Barbara is the next victim. Yeah. But uh, I'm not sure now. Then she basically gone like, I'm never going back to that house. Their tea is terrible. Yeah. And they're creepy. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's the van connection. Maybe. But because that's an awful lot of work to put in for a van connection. Like, she, you never had to add Olivia into that whole thing. No. And she's Jerome's sister. Does that somehow have something to do with it? Maybe. But even Jerome, he seems like very much a side character of, like, oh, we needed some filler here, so Holly's not pathetically alone. She needs... Yeah. And, like, then what does Olivia have to do with anything, aside from yeah. just being there? Like, don't get me wrong, I think Olivia's cool. Or is she somehow in on it? And we just don't know. I'd be surprised. I don't get those vibes from her. No, I get the feeling that she's more likely to whack Emily with a cane (laughs) than she is to help her with literally anything. (laughs) Like, can you open the door for me, dear? No, whack. I would. I would enjoy a good cane whacking. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be quite. Would add some interest to the book. I mean, I'm I'm there for like a full on like geriatric showdown. (laughs) (laughs) I think it'd be quite amusing. (laughs) So, yeah, I. But yeah, if you can wade through all the extra garbage, it's not a bad book no, so far. No, but there is a point where you shouldn't have to work I so hard for it. I don't want to have to edit as I read, essentially. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have to wade through. Mm-hmm. Not this much. Yeah. Like, the story is not that good. No. To make it worth that amount of waiting so far. Yeah. I guess, like, I don't understand people's fascination with Stephen King. I know. Not judging by the two examples we've had so far. No, and I know, like Gail, who works at one of the other branches, loves him, and like. I was she, really looking forward to getting her take on this book. I know she told me once if like any time he has a new book come out, like it's an automatic buy for her. Yeah, she already had the new copy. Yeah, and so I just I don't understand that, and so that's why I think I'd like to go back and read some of his other stuff. I feel like his earlier stuff, just knowing the the very basic, like, synopsis of the stories, they were more creative. Yeah. Like, there's a possessed car. That's the... Is that the Mr. Mercedes one, I think? I don't remember. Uh, Is it Mr. Mercedes? I feel like... I don't know. Either way. Like, that is something that's legitimately unique. Mm Mm-hmm. Is it overdone now? Yes. But that's only because he did it first. Or one of the first. This is not unique. Yeah. Old people thinking they're better than everyone else and trying to live forever, not the most unique thing in the world. But old people's being cannibals? People going to extreme lengths to try and extend their life? Yeah, that is not the most unusual mm-hmm. thing in the world. This same basic concept has happened before. Yeah. There's nothing about it that's unique. And I'm not saying you have to be funky and different every time because there's a point where that also becomes overdone. But it kind of just falls flat because Holly as a character isn't enough Mm -hmm. to bring the story to life. Not so far anyway. Like, at this point, I'm legitimately more interested in Brenda's story than I am of Holly. (laughs) Yeah. Like, Brenda's story, I'm like, I'd read that. That's actually interesting. But Not a horror story, but... Yeah, make it horror, sure. But that's the thing, too. At this point, this isn't proper horror. This is thriller. Like, I've read horror. This is not scary. I could turn the lights off and be just fine. <laughs> not me. I'm going to have nightmares about liver forever. You might not want to turn the lights off in the kitchen. <laughs> but like, I might not want to get into a cage ever. Th- at no point has this given me like the creepy, like, oh, I want to walk through my house and make sure there's no one here feeling. No, that's like, true. I've like, never, like, 
there's just none of that with this book so far. I am not. I want to throw out the liver in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have liver in your fridge? No. <laughs> I am not a horror reader. This is like Stephen King is the only horror that I've ever read, and most of what I've read of his has not been super, super horrific. Yeah. And so for me, this is already like, mm, it's a bit much like grossness wise. Am I afraid? Not really. We'll see. Is there an old couple who lives across the street from me? Yeah. <laughs> Will you be checking in their basement? No. No. <laughs> They're very nice. Every time I see them outside, they wave enthusiastically. So did Ted Bundy. Well, <laughs> yes, but they've never once lured me into their house. <laughs> Not even with the promise of cookies. No, I've never, never once been inside their house. Like, I've read sci-fi that has more horror in it than this. This is not horror. This is, I saw a conspiracy theory and went with it. <laughs> like. So, would you say he's losing his touch? He's losing his scariness. <laughs> he's gone from, you know, the, the drafty ghost with the ooh, clicking chains, you know in a haunted house but you never actually see him so that's part of the terror to an old man in a white sheet going boo <laughs> <laughs> sorry Stephen. that just makes me think of the little kid who jumped out at me yeah. in the stacks the other day <laughs> boo <laughs> that was terrifying <laughs> and hilarious all at the same time that kid is better at scaring when Stephen king is right oh now. that that was amazing. Like, right now, he's getting the gross-out factor. Oh, absolutely. But you talk about liver enough, and yeah, eventually you will. <laughs> oh, like, at but this point, it's just... I cannot think about liver without gagging now, though. Like, seriously. I'm glad it's something I don't eat. I, me too. That's... But, like, ooh, it makes me almost not want to eat red meat again. <laughs> How to go vegan. <laughs> Read this book. <laughs> Except for don't, because vegans get shot in this book. <laughs> Which is horrible. Oh, I heard a funny story the other day. A girl went into like a Starbucks or something. Oh no! Millionaire what? walks into a Starbucks. <laughs> what did she order? And she said she was vegan, and she ordered something that had dairy, I think. And the person serving her had to break it to her that dairy is not vegan. That's actually yeah, that's not a oh, vegan food item. Worst one that I've heard is oh no. Dairy's fine because the cow was vegan. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, choose your dietary restrictions, whatever. That's up to you. That's your own choice, whatever. But if you're a vegan that eats meat, you're not a vegan. Well, they didn't say meat, they said dairy. Yes, I know. But like, veganism is a diet that has certain guidelines and rules. Yeah. If you're going to break all of them, you're no longer following that. Now you're a vegetarian. Well, yeah, we should I probably mean, get off the topic. <laughs> we're gonna have vegans coming for us in the comments. <laughs> They're not eating the cow. They're just eating the products. Yes, of... but that's what vegan is. You don't consume or use the products. I guess that it's the same as eating from... eggs, right? Yeah. Because you wouldn't eat eggs either. Because you could make the same argument for eggs. Because chickens are vegan, are they not? Yeah. So most like, of the animals we eat are vegan. So you could make that same argument for eggs, right? As you could for dairy. Yeah, but then you become a vegetarian. Yeah. Because vegan is animal or any animal products. Yeah. No leather, no honey, no anything. No honey? No honey. Honey's not vegan because it comes from bees. I guess that's true. So if you're fine with eating the products that animals make, but not the animals themselves, you are by definition then vegetarian. Yeah. Like. Yeah, no, you're right. That is true. I'm just going to offend a bunch of vegans with our statements. And then again, I'm pretty sure the liberal talk has gotten it already done. I don't think we're saying anything offensive. We're just saying what is and is not a vegan. No, but neither of us are vegans, so we're (laughs) not really qualified. Because, I mean, I'd eat a hamburger if it was in front of me right now. Oh my goodness, now I want a hamburger. (laughs) How about a liver burger? Nope, now we're done again. Anyway, do we have anything else to say about this book? I think we have recorded too far into lunchtime and now we're both just hungry. (laughs) Yeah, true. I feel like something's got to happen with Barbara and Olivia. Barbara is her name, not Brenda. I think we've been calling her Brenda. I also predict that Holly will make more bad if a millionaire walks into a bar joke. And whine about smoking and how her dead mom is so horrible. And Yeah, I mean, her mom does sound like a piece of work, but... Oh, she totally does. I got that from, like, the first 
like tenth of the book. But she keeps like yeah. There's no new information. I don't want to say there's no in new information presented. Like there's the information presented that her mother is actually a gazillionaire, and basically stole her money just to. Mm -hmm control her he's very controlling there's that but like that is the only thing that happens that's the only bit of new information we get in the entire half of a book that we've read mm -hmm. and she's talked about like every second page mm -hmm. it's so annoying yeah i need to let this book go as long as there's no more liver you know that would be good yeah i cannot handle any more liver New. Or body part talk. I expect that there will be more. I get the feeling you're going to be in for a wee bit of a shock in the mm -hmm. second half. Then. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm worried the second half is going to get even more gory. I think it definitely will. Put it this way, as much as I don't want to read about the process, there's a point where I'm going, if you're a half-decent horror writer, you're at least adding something about the process. Mm -hmm. So as much as I don't want to read it, I'll be a little bit disappointed that it won't be there even though I don't want it to be there because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know hypocritical yep. I know I know what you're saying but like it's horror it has to be some kind of horror because now yeah. it's just thriller yeah so with a little bit of gross stuff yeah I kind yeah. of keep expecting Jerome to die oh interesting I don't know why he's just got that kind of this one's gonna die vibe hmm. <laughs> which might be completely inaccurate but interesting I don't know I don't have anything to base that on just a feeling okay well, I guess we'll see. I should write that down so that we remember. <laughs> Just thinks Jerome is going to die so that when we record the next time, then we can refer back to that. It's, he's a forgettable character that she has some kind of emotional attachment to that killing off would provide a big punch of emotional weight. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's my only reason. And I don't understand where Jerome came from, really, but... Yeah, me neither. He just kind of show, showed up. Yeah. And Barbara, his sister. Yeah. It's a mystery. Oh, I th they must have been in the other books because Barbara, Barbara's the one who talks about the elevator shaft guy. Yeah. So. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like doing homework if I have to read all the other books before I have to read a standalone. I know. Then it's not a standalone. It's a series. <laughs> well, technically, according to Goodreads, it's not a standalone anyways because it's part of the Holly Gibney series, which includes The Outsiders and uh, a short story or novellas. It's not really written like a series, though. It's not. But anyway. No. no, I suspect in the second half it's going to get more disgusting. Mm -hmm. And somebody's going to get kidnapped at this point. Probably Brenda. Maybe Holly. Mm, she's had zero contact with him yet. I know. That doesn't I say. think Brenda or Jerome. That's how Barbara it happens. or Jerome would be more likely. That's how it happens in Cozy Mysteries. Or it's Mythical always Brenda. the main character that gets caught up with the bad guys. Yeah, but we've established that Cozy Mysteries are crap. So Psh, Bite your tongue. Bite your they, time. I just shouldn't say they're crap. They have their merits, but they're not exactly groundbreaking in terms of plot. No. But they're nice books to read when you, A, don't want to have to think. Don't have a better think. book to read. <laughs> when you don't want to think about anything too hard. When you're not looking for something to keep you awake at night. <laughs> like, when you don't want to read, like, a thriller or something. Like, it's mm. still a mystery, but it's... It's a mystery Gentle. without any of the... I, I need to know what happened, so I'm going to stay up till three in the morning reading this dumb book, even though I should have been in bed that, hours ago. and it's just, like, it's gentle. It's nothing scary. There's no, like, the bad guys are bad, but they're not, like... Bad, bad. Yeah. They're Scooby-Doo villains. Yeah. Yeah. It's always and a real so estate developer. That's, like, when you've had a stressful year at work, <laughs> and you just want to read something you don't have to think too hard about... It's not going to add more stress to your life. You mean like a book that constantly mentions COVID? <laughs> That's when you go for the cozy mysteries. And I have been reading a ton of them lately. And yes, I know that they are crappy, but... Like I said, they have their merits. They're comforting. But they are not groundbreaking when it comes to plot. No, no. Anyway, those are our predictions for the second half. We'll come back and be thoroughly grossed out. <laughs> We are back with part two of Holly by Stephen King. And right off the bat, I would like to say that I can confirm the cover does actually glow in the dark. Nice. I did try it out at home. And uh, yeah, so the words and the windows on the house are what glows. Awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool, actually. I think more books should have glow in the dark covers. More things should be glow in the dark, period. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why, because it's not like I'm reading it in a dark room. But no, but glow in the dark is fun. I know. It, it was very, it <laughs> was very fun. Because I'm a 12-year-old. I know, right? <laughs> 
it's true. Uh, yeah. So, I know how I felt about the second half of this book. What did you think about it? <laughs> It's not mystery enough to be mystery. It's not thrilling enough to be thriller. And there's no horror in it beyond. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It's not. It's disgusting. But honestly, there's not. It, it's not horror. It's just boring. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> this, I, I really just, like, to me, sometimes the writing felt clunky. Mm-hmm. The dialogue was weird. And I just was like, mm is this your best work or is this just like I got to keep writing books because I'm not dead <laughs> I like I like that like I can't retire <laughs> that's Stephen King's motivational poster I got to keep writing because I'm not dead oh well, like <laughs> I mean he's of an age where he could probably very comfortably retire yeah so why I don't know like my takeaway from this book is honestly I need to go back and read one of his older ones I know because this is sad well, I have read a book of his that I really enjoyed, and this was not it. Like, I want horror to be horror. Like, I don't really want to read horror, but yeah. Yeah, but but if I'm reading a genre, I want it to be that genre. Yeah. This was like this like, isn't horror. It was gross. I felt like throwing up multiple times while I read it because cannibalism and way more details than I ever needed to know. Mm-hmm. But um, even that, less than I thought there would be. <laughs> but every time those two crazy old bats ate something i was like ooh, because mm-hmm. he knew what they were eating but yeah like i don't know i just this after the first half i was like so far i don't hate it by the end i was like i hate this book i hate it i hate it i hate it did so not enjoy at all like, the second half shut up about covid yes shut up about smoking yes. how dare you kill olivia yes. and i'm sorry you need to re-examine what horror is I need to actually look into it and see if this was actually supposed to be classed as horror because it is not horror. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the joke, the millionaire oh, joke, God. wasn't even funny in the end. No. Like, seriously, the, in the entire joke is just like the punchline's what? We charge for the alcohol, but the nuts are complimentary? Yeah, something like that. Like, seriously, it took you an entire book of how many pages to be yeah. able to finish that joke? It does say horror fiction. It says subjects, LCGFT, horror fiction. I don't know what LCGFT stands for. And then it also says detective and mystery fiction. But it's it not... It's not mystery! Because you know who the... You know who the killers are from the very beginning of the book. I had teeny tiny hope when I thought that Huey the Clip was going to be an accomplice. Their bowling buddy. Mm-hmm. Because he was disturbingly healthy for his age. Well, he was just a creepy old man. Yeah. But exactly. There was some hope that he could be an accomplice. <laughs> yeah, true. But it wasn't. No. It was just them. And I'm like... No. There was, like... Honestly, it's just boring. I know. I, the second half, I was like, get there faster. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. This thing could practically be a short story. I did enjoy when the old man used the word clover for COVID. <laughs> I don't know why. That just tickled me. When she is talking to the bowling alley owner and mm-hmm. Roddy and basically anybody else. It's like blah, 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 murder, murder, murder. Oh yeah. COVID. Let me insert my political opinion here. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like it's just awkward and shoehorned in. Yeah. And it just, I know, like I say, they're It's like is... he had a COVID quota or something like that, that he had to meet in terms of like how many times he had to mention it in the book. Well, I don't know if you read the author's note at the back or yeah. here. And so he did talk about how he feels like, real life like his books should reflect what is happening in real life in that case it's boring as hell (laughs) and so i did try and read a couple of reviews just to see like because it has 4.6 stars on goodreads i think it's not based on his name or the actual book i'm guessing it's based well the one review was like i don't know it was so long i couldn't get through it but loved it five stars and then one of you read other books (laughs) one of the other reviewers was like it's far enough past COVID that I can read about it now. And I was like, no, it's, no, not. it's not. Not for me. Cause it's not just... when it's this level of harping on it. I know. Like if you mention it occasionally, fine. But it was like in every interaction. Yeah. It came up. And at no point did it really have to be. Mm-mm. Like it wasn't like, oh, we're quarantined in the Antarctic and there's a murderer on the loose. It's valid. This was like, apart from saying, and she kept her mask on. 
That's all. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to go to, like, oh, Moderna, Pfizer, yeah. Elbow or, bump, elbow bump, mask, mask, mask. I love Trump. Down with the mask. Anti-vaccine. By the way, would you like a sandwich? Like, it's... <laughs> would you like a sandwich? <laughs> it makes just as much sense as having the interactions. I know. Like, I don't know that I will ever want to read about COVID in such detail. Like Not... Like, I'm fine with it being, like, this is just the world for those two, three years. We were there. Yeah. Exactly. This is not a book that's going to be studied in history class. Mm -mm. Like, and it doesn't feel like an authentic part of the book. No. It doesn't really go into how it affects business. Yeah. Or businesses or people. Like. No. On any meaningful level. It's like, you should wear a mask and also gloves for whatever reason. The gloves, I feel like we're just like, oh, that way Brenda can find the glove later and go, I know that glove. I gave you that glove. Yeah. And then break into a house. It was a good setup for that. One thing I will but say... still, it could have been done better. Yeah. One thing I will say, though, he is good at having a cliffhanger ending to the chapter. I found lots of chapters ended, and I was like, we can't stop there. And then he would jump to another storyline and then go back to the other. And you, like, are looking at me like, that's I'm nuts. But there was a few chapters where I was like, okay, no, I got to know what happens because... It Not really. It was kind for me. of a cliffhanger. For me, I'm like, I was bored enough. Like, there wasn't really anything where I'm like, oh, this character's fate hangs in the balance. Because we knew Bonnie. Bonnie? Yeah, Bonnie. Was dead from the get go. Yeah. But. Unless he'd actually taken a weird turn and actually killed Holly, which I would have been a fan of. Or <laughs> done anything to Brenda. But, like, by the time you got to the second half, Brenda was established enough. You knew you, she wasn't going to die. Are you talking about Barbara? Barbara. Sorry. The poet. Poets, yes, Barbara. And her story. Stop with the B names. <laughs> like, the whole Barbara and Olivia, I don't really know what that I added. I feel like it could have been a separate book. Well, it, but there wasn't enough there to make it a book either. There wasn't enough to the book to make it a book. <laughs> but I don't understand that part of the storyline. Like, what is the purpose of this? It was literally I just guess so was... that there was somebody removed enough that they could come in at the end and go, aha, here's all the pieces that fit together. Ta-da! Well, and I guess Olivia talked to her about, was it Jerome? No. No, ha- Jerome's her brother. Um, ha- Jorge. Jorge. That's right, Jorge. Um, because- but even that, it's not like they couldn't have solved it without Jorge. Yeah, right. And also, how does she know Jerome and Barbara? Like, where did they come from? What is the... Yeah, I, I'm assuming that's something that's covered in the previous books. Yeah, I know. But that's but the thing. Like, if they're supposed to be working still... at the detective agency, I'd love to work for that detective agency because apparently you can take a couple months off. Yeah. Do your own thing, still get paid your grand. I don't think they work for her, though. They assist like, somehow because they're... She, they had the... Um, they had the keys. passwords to the computers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and the keys to her office. But that, that you don't relationship... Get that if you don't work for me. <laughs> that relationship to me was like, it was a puzzle. And mm. you could have explained that a little better. It wouldn't have had to take a long time. You could have just... Skipped some of the COVID stuff and put that in there yes, instead. Yes, exactly. Or just shut up about smoking for five minutes. Yeah. And I was also really disappointed that Rodney and Emily got killed off as yes. opposed to having to pay for their crimes. Mm-hmm. Because the humiliation of having to actually be paraded the front of cameras yeah. and stuff like that for court trials would have yeah. really fried her. Although, honestly, every time they say Emily, I just think Emily Gilmore. Because, <laughs> no offense to Emily Gilmore, but there's a few um, similarities. <laughs> oh, but Emily Gilmore is much less disgusting than this old lady. <laughs> so we think. <laughs> Surprise! It was Emily Gilmore all along. Uh, um, <laughs> no, but like the insistence that the Christmas party must go on. Mm. Like that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. And the looks above all else. The rich white woman. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, like I remember thinking they kept talking about their cyanide pills. And I was, oh, I just hope they don't get to take those mm-hmm. before they get caught. And then they got killed and that was... I mean, I'm glad they didn't take them, but... Um, also sad that they got killed. Yes. And also as if an earring could cut a jugular. I know. I, I want to know what earring that is now. Like what kind of... To me, it sounded like a cheap earring. And relatively small. Yeah. And like, how... To go in deep enough and then actually have... I mean, A, Holly having the strength and B, it being sharp enough to actually cut through that... Yeah. Like, I could see maybe if she stabbed in, possibly, but actually slicing? Mm-hmm. Honey, no. No. 
Like I like what kind of savage earring is this? I don't know. I kind of want a pair. I know. Apparently well. they're very handy. <laughs> Do you though? Well, you never know. How about you just stay out of situations where you might have to stab somebody in the jugular with an earring? But I might need to stick my nose into somebody's business where it doesn't belong. Uh, I also, I was at page 406 and I was like, how can there still be 40 pages left? Nope. Wrap it up, King. <laughs> Honestly, that was me at page 40. <laughs> How can there still be 406 pages left? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's just... Yeah, no, it's not... I don't know. There's a point where authors are selling books based on their name and not the content. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely one of them. It, either that or we're both missing something. No, I'd argue the book is missing something. <laughs> well... A plot, story, and apparently horror yeah. Horrify me for crying out loud. Still, 4.6 stars on Goodreads. Am I just jaded or... I don't know. Like, it was I gross. I played too many video games and now I'm numb to all the violence. It bothered me that they referred to their victims as livestock, also. I mean, I did find the elf bites thing a little bit funny. <laughs> but mainly, I think, pretty sure I actually saw a recipe once for elf bites. That were like little Christmas cookies, so... <laughs> I think that more of me. You can't too. ever make those cookies. I will not make them. <laughs> Just at Christmas, Janine, would you like some elf bites? No. Yuck. Like, I could hardly read those parts towards the end. Like, I just had had enough. Like, this is gross. Honestly, I... Ed Gein is worse. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm just but saying that this was gross for me. I've listened to podcasts. I've read a book about Ed Gein. It's bad enough that I'm like, okay, this isn't good. I'm not advocating for it, obviously. It's still horrible, but it's not nearly the level of gross that Ed Gein is. So there's a part of me that's going, it's, it's not, okay, uh, The Pawn. Mm-hmm. That was worse. That you was a, thought, the better book. You thought The Pawn was worse than this? Yes. Okay. Because it actually made me give a crap about the characters. Mm. This didn't. No. I, if the book had ended with every single character in that book exploding... You would not have cared. I would not have cared. Except the, Olivia. I liked her. Olivia was the only exception, and he killed her off anyway. Yep. Well, she was old. Yes, I know, but she could have made it till the end of the book. I know. She would have loved seeing Emily get arrested. I know. Would have been happy days for her. Exactly. Happy, happy days. Yeah, I... I don't know. Like, it's... If it's horror, it needs to be horror. There needs to be a psychological element at the very least. You know... In, in this one, you know who the bad guy is. Yeah. And they were just... You know what happens. Crap, crazy old people. It's just a case of slogging through the book and waiting for the characters to catch up. Yeah, that's true. Like, the the fact that the killers were revealed at the beginning of the book... Yeah. And there was no major, like, twist. It was just following along as Holly pieced it all together. Yeah. Where's the... Where's the gotcha? Where's the horror? Like, yeah. it's... We knew from the... Like, we knew in part one already... Yeah. ...that they were snacking. The, like... Yeah. I know. It wasn't... Snacking. I expected, fully expected the second half to be a bit more like get out the saws kind of yeah. thing where it, it no. takes a turn into horror. Not like the one part when she broke into the garage to get pictures of their van mm-hmm. and then Emily was lying, Emily? Yeah. Yeah. Was lying on the deck or whatever. Help me, help me. And I was like, don't help her. Run away. Like, well, don't be an idiot. Holly was even thinking like, what if they're using this as a ploy? Yeah. I'm like... Yeah. How dumb are you? I know. That part was like, come on, you know better than to go help her. That's the thing. Like, I don't like Holly as a character. No. I think her joke is horrible. (laughs) It's not funny. It should not take a 400-page book to get one terrible joke out. (laughs) That is not even a joke. And not even one she came up with on her, like... Yeah. It's not even original. (laughs) Yeah. It just felt like, honestly, that was Stephen King's way of going, remember, she's a millionaire. Yeah, we know. Okay, don't rub it in. As are you, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. It's just gauche at this point. But. (sighs) Yeah. I need to go back and read his older stuff because this is not horror. I know. Like, there wasn't, like, horror you should not be able to read in the dark. Horror, when you're done it, you should be looking behind doors to make sure there's not a monster with a chainsaw. Even though he couldn't feasibly fit in four inches of space. Yeah. I should, like, there should come a time where I feel like I have to pause because I'm afraid. Exactly. Not because I'm so bored out of my I board. want to stick the book in the freezer. <laughs> this one, um... Did he write Cujo? No. Did he? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Because that's one, that's the one that Rachel stuck in the freezer on Friends, I think. 
Is it Cujo? Yeah, I think Cujo is what they were. Cujo is the dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look up the movie. Oh, it's a good little puppy. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop now. Based on Stephen King's 1981 novel. There you go. So maybe you have to try that one. Like, that's the thing. This isn't horror. This is not thriller. It's not mystery. It's not really anything. It's fiction. This is following along because you apparently have no better books to read. <laughs> one thing I did notice, though, when he kept, Holly kept saying poopy and whatever. Oh, girl, so already. So she doesn't swear. She should. The other characters in the book swear, but she does not until the very end when she's in trouble. And I think she says, like, the F word one time. But throughout the whole book, I started noticing that she does not swear. But the other characters do. I can not swear and still not be using the word poopy. I know. Because I'm, I'm not I'm not five. saying that as a justification for the use of that particular word. However, I mean, it was just something I noticed. There was a point where I'm like, seriously, Stephen, maybe you should seek help for this obsession. Because, <laughs> like, even with Olivia, it's like she moved and they're like, oh, she's going to fart. Where's like I don't care. We don't need to be apprised of this woman's every bowel movement. It's, no. It's not important to the story, so no. don't talk about it. I don't care. Like, not unless it's... I'm not a big fan of... The house is empty. Oh, no, it's not. I'm not a big fan of... It's not bathroom humor, but bathroom talk like that. Like, poopy and farty and all of those I things. I don't care for it. I point where it fits, and it does not fit. In this, it makes her sound like a 12-year-old. It fits when you're a 7-year-old boy. Yes. If you're writing a book about a seven-year-old boy, yeah, then it fits. Yeah. But she's how old? 90-something. She's in her late 90s, I think. Yeah. And Holly is how old? Yeah, I don't know how old she is, actually. I got an impression it's 40s, 50s. Right. But, I mean, I've read books where characters don't swear. And it's a great opportunity to get creative. Mm-hmm. Rather than defaulting to a seven-year-old boy. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Like, I think even Stinky wouldn't say poopy. <laughs> no, Stinky would not say that. <laughs> He's a skateboarder. He would never use a word like poopy. That's exactly. not cool. It's not cool, man. If a seven-year-old boy is cooler than you, come on. But, like, I will go out on a limb and say I think the best part of this book was the glow into the dark cover. <laughs> yeah, no, I would agree with you there. <laughs> Hands down. Get Spend the money on the glow-in-the-dark cover, and just you can get rid of the rest of the book. It's a book jacket, so it's removable <laughs> even. You know, you could probably knock over about 40 bucks off the price. <laughs> You're now, brutal. We really hated this book. <laughs> Don't hold back now. Tell me what you really feel. I know, right? I wrote, When I finished the book, I wrote down in my notes, I'm so happy to be done this horrible book. Yeah. Like, it's just... Yeah. The Pawn. Christian fiction is more horror, more mystery, more thriller, and at times more gory. Yeah, it's true. Read The Pawn instead. Stephen James. Much better. It's a series. It is a series. And it was it was good. It was not your typical Christian fiction, that's for sure. I'm I... just disappointed in Stephen King, honestly. Well, you should read 112263. I'm going to have to read something. That one is so not... Better. It's not horror, though, so don't go into that expecting horror because that's not what it is. No, but I want horror. Okay. But if you want a good Stephen King book, 112263. I recommend that one, hands down. See, I think part of the reason I don't like the last two Stephen King books that we've done is I, I'm not a fan of his writing style. No. The teeny tiny chapters are annoying. It always feels like you're outside of the story. Like, some some books, you're, you're there with the characters, like... Mm -hmm. You're invested in their lives. With the two Stephen King books that we've read, it's very much you're on the outside looking in. Yeah, I agree. The writing style, like the only word I can think of is clunky. Mm -hmm. To me, it just felt very clunky. The dialogue was awkward often. Um, I don't remember thinking that about 112263. And that book is really interesting because it's about time travel. Mm -hmm. And so this man discovers a portal to go back in time to the year when JFK was assassinated and he's so he's going back and forth and how the time travel what he does when he's in the past how that affects what happens in the present see that sounds more interesting it's very interesting it's fascinating to think how one little tiny thing that you don't think makes a difference makes a huge difference for something that will happen in the future see one of the most interesting things I've read about time travel is it's interesting how when people travel back in time there's this assumption that stepping on a butterfly or 
every minor action has major consequences. Mm -hmm. But in the present, nobody thinks that any minor action actually has consequences or can change anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. It was just I thought it was really yeah interesting. I may have to check that one out because I mean it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is just disappointing. Honestly, that's the best word for this book is disappointing. Yeah. I also do want to read The Green Mile because I think that one would be good. Is that one supposed to be horror? I'm not sure. I know it's about a man on death row, I think. I've seen bits and pieces of the movie. Okay. So. That's the thing. I can never remember because so many of his works have been turned into movies. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah. And Mike has watched the movie, so it can't be that horrific because I don't <laughs> think he's really. I can't see Mike being a horror fan. No. I think there's some, like, supernatural stuff that happens, but. Or not supernatural. I don't know supernatural to me it's not aliens see that's the thing too i'm not sure about the other ones in the series if they're supernatural or not um but i don't like it when a book goes from supernatural and then there's one where she's like oh yeah no this is just this everyday world yeah i was like but ghosts exist yeah but not in this one <laughs> i'm just like your particular town your particular area doesn't have ghosts like come on yeah no demonic possessions today? Did it take a hiatus? Summer vacation? <laughs> I don't know if the other ones in the series were like that, though. Yeah, I have no idea if they are or not, but just a problem where it's... Just, if you're going to go with Supernatural, stick with Supernatural. If you're going to go with not Supernatural, don't. Yeah. yeah. But keep it consistent. I I'm, mean, she did say at one point that there wasn't anything Supernatural compared to the other ones, but or her other cases, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that was actually... Yeah. And I'm not going to read the other books to find out because currently I'm very disappointed in Mr. King. <laughs> I'm not saying no to Stephen King ever again because I actually did purchase The Green Mile with the intent to read it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to purchase it with the intent to make a stack. I just wanted to put it on my shelf to add to my collection. No, I, I do definitely want to read that one and I have heard good things about it. Um, he has to have something good because yeah. you you do not get to be... Yeah. as big of an author as he is if you write like this yeah like this is not enough to get you anywhere yeah yeah i'm not saying never again but i think i will stay away from his horror his more horror horror-y stuff because it's not my we don't have to worry about it. it's not horror it's yeah true boring although I... if you need a nap read his horror yeah. <laughs> i did read for an assignment when i was doing my library tech course I read the first, middle, and end chapter, and it had to be a horror book, so I chose Stephen King. And the one I chose was Pet Cemetery. Mm. It wasn't like the first and the middle and the last chapters were just really meh. See, that's the thing. I'm like, have I been desensitized by true crime? I honestly don't know. Because like I said, like, compared to Ed Gaines, this is like nothing. Yeah. And that was real. This is fake. True. <laughs> like. That is true. Maybe that's our is problem. It, is, is that my problem? Too much true crime. Where reality has killed fiction for me? Maybe. I hope that's not the case. That would suck. That would really suck. Maybe I just need to, like, detox and just do, like, puppies and rainbows for a while. <laughs> You're not a puppies and rainbows girl. No. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean that as an insult. That's just not your personality. No. No. <laughs> not in the slightest. No. Not even maybe. That is... Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope, nope, nope. No puppies nope, nope. and rainbows here. I mean, I like puppies. Puppies are adorable. Yeah. But light and positivity is not my shtick. <laughs> what? If you want to know all the ways you can die, that's my shtick. <laughs> not as threats, just as fun facts. Yes. <laughs> I need to detox and just read, like, happy books for a while. Happy books. What are happy books to you? I'm curious. Books I enjoy. <laughs> okay, so not... Like Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> okay. Although I, I'm working on Mistborn, the the third book of the Mistborn series, and it's like the there's earthquakes, mist all the time, ash is piling up like nobody's business. Essentially, the world is ending, preservation is dead, ruin is taking over, and that's a great book. That's my happy book right okay, now. See, so there's probably so something deeply wrong with me. When you say a happy book, you mean a book that makes you happy, mm -hmm. not a book that is inherently happy in its... No, I, I want a book when I reach the end of it, I go, that was a good book. <laughs> I enjoyed that book. Okay. That or I just read Gordon Carmen. So, like, when you said happy, I was thinking, like, funny, feel-good type of book. And oh, I was I like, that's... feel-good books. I hate feel-good books. That doesn't sound books. like something you would read, so that's why I was curious to, uh, to know. My feel-good fluffy books tend to be at least one person dies. <laughs> because the ones that are, like, too... 
like everything comes up roses i'm like that's not reality i can't yeah it's too far removed okay and it just grates on my nerves and like even okay barbara in holly won the poetry thing right Mm -hmm. jerome got his book published Mm -hmm. holly is a multi-millionaire Mm -hmm. that's too many happy endings i can't deal (laughs) well the other guy still has covid so yeah but he's probably gonna be a millionaire when he comes out of the hospital as well how will he be a millionaire oh i don't know he'll probably slip and sue the hospital and then get money (laughs) that's how it works in america i've been told (laughs) but like that's too many happy endings for me it feels very much like he's going everybody's happy everybody's rich everybody's got trauma but let's move on and never talk about these characters again everybody got what they wanted yeah it's too for a horror book that's too much happy ending yep yeah i agree like it it comes off as inauthentic Mm -hmm. unauthentic unauthentic inauthentic inauthentic i think so disauthentic no dash authentic oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't resist Sorry, I'll stop now. On that note, it's time to wrap it up, I think. Yes. Do you have any fun facts for us? Um, I do. So I saw a clip of an interview with Stephen King uh, where he shared the story. And so then I went on with the theme of his relationship with his wife, which there's some really interesting things. So years before Carrie, Stephen King asked his wife to marry him. And because of their dire financial situation, they couldn't afford expensive jewelry as an expression of their love. They ended up buying extremely cheap wedding bands. And it's the one that King wears on his finger to this day. He said on Good Morning America, this is the interview that I saw, this one right here, 750. I went back on the bus with my wife. The car was broken down and I went, gee, I hope these rings don't turn our fingers green. And she said, I hope we're married long enough to find out. That's the kind of pessimism I need. (laughs) And so I thought that was really interesting. So I just kept on with that theme um, with King and his wife. King met his wife, Tabitha, who is also a writer, when they both worked in the library at the University of Maine. There's a long-running joke that I married Tabitha because we were poor and she came with a typewriter, he told Bon Appetit in 2013, but it's really because of the fish that she cooked for me. We were living in an apartment with two kids and I was selling stories to some of the men's magazines and we were just barely making out. I was teaching school and in the summertime, in order to make ends meet, I was working in a laundry and Carrie sold for like $400,000 to paperback, and I was so excited. It was Sunday when I got this news, and the only thing open was a drugstore. So I went out and bought my wife a hairdryer. It's all I could think of. A hairdryer? The, the drugstore sold nothing else? It's all he could think of. It's very I, unimaginative for a writer. <laughs> I just thought that was sort of funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. why a hairdryer of all the things that I don't you could... Know. Like, surely you could find some chocolates. I mean, I've or... heard it said never buy your wife or girlfriend anything with a cord. <laughs> and I heartily disagree. Mm, yeah. I got an angle grinder for my birthday and I'm bloody thrilled. <laughs> I was using that thing the other day. It is brilliant. <laughs> so anyways, just some interesting... Uh, tidbits of king and tabitha king and their early life together i don't know and really we ran out of other author stuff from the other one already i didn't really know which way to go with this one and i didn't really want to talk about cannibalism because well yeah no let's end on a happy note and i don't want to discuss COVID anymore either so no we could talk about smoking i guess we could have <laughs> talked about but i, I don't heard it off of it already uh yeah so that's kind of i just thought that the story about the rings was kind of funny yeah like they were seven dollars and fifty cents, and I think you can even buy a ring for that price these days. And you can't buy hardly anything for that price these days. Not even a hair dryer. You can buy a back scratcher. That's oddly specific. Okay. Well, <laughs> daughter number two was in the dollar store a while ago, found a back scratcher, but there was other things she wanted to buy more that day. But she has had this back scratcher on her mind <laughs> since that time. And so now she had gotten a few weeks worth of allowance and was like, do you think I have enough money to buy a back scratcher? And I was like, I don't know. I guess we'll have to go check it out. Goodness. So Mike took her to the store and she bought a back scratcher and it was actually $3.98 or something like that. Like less than $4. Oh, man. Yep. And she has been oh, kids are ridiculous. scratching everything inside <laughs> since then. Oh, yeah. Man. So, anyways, 
now we know at least the origins of your oddly specific story. <laughs> yes. So if you come into $4, you can go to Morden, to the dollar store, and get yourself a back scratcher. Good news, good news. So <laughs> there you go. Anyway, with that, I think we should probably just end. We're done with Stephen King. Please don't <laughs> make me do another one. I think you picked this book, so... Uh, I probably did. Don't I tell. Dumb ideas. I will not do more Stephen King, at least not for a very long while. If we do, it has to be one of the old, old ones. Old ones, yeah, and for sure. If he can't scare me with that, I may need therapy to figure out where my scare button is broken. <laughs> so that's what we thought of this book. But those are just our opinions, and we'd like to hear yours. So leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Between the Lines, and thanks to our editor, Linda. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.